Hello everyone and welcome back to KDH Art Class. We're moving on to texture. Texture is how something feels, or in the art world, looks like it feels. It could be smooth. It could be kind of bumpy. It could be soft. These are kind of soft, except on the ends, out. It could be sharp or pokey, how something feels. Or like I said, in the art world, where we create a drawing that looks like it would feel flat or spiky, grassy, fuzzy, shiny, satiny, bumpy, feathery or even furry. So texture is what brings a lot of our stuff to life. As well as just the whole experience of it. I mean, look at my background. These are all from texture rubbings. So texture rubbings is where you take your broken old crayons never throw them away you can melt them down and create new ones and there's so many things you can use in this case we're going to peel off the paper and we're lay them down sideways and we're going to transfer that means we're going to take something that has a roughness put a piece of paper over it rub on it and we're going to transfer that texture onto our piece of paper But if you don't have access to a lot of stuff, you can make your own. So we're going to talk about some things you can go around and find to create texture rubbings with, or in this case, what we can make. And all you really need is glue, scissors, some old boxes, whether it's soap, uh, the back of any of these art supplies that's not too thick, poster board, okay. Kleenex boxes, cereal boxes, those are the best boxes to use. They still curl up a little bit when you add the glue, but at the same time, it's pretty easy for kids to cut through. If you use cardboard boxes, yes, that would be nice and strong. It's just a lot harder for kids to cut through. And we, we are making these videos kid friendly. So we're gonna make what's called texture plates, which are basically things that have texture on it that we can transfer onto our paper. So I want, you to go around your house and this is going to take two days to do all right uh, granted I did these first thing in the morning it's been several hours but as you can see the glue is still drying on them and depending on how thick it is will depend on how long it takes to dry this one's almost completely dry there's even a chance I might even risk it because um, I could probably risk this one these you can't see, but I have already uh, glued on patterns to these. This one I kind of drew in advance so you can kind of see what kind of pattern it's going to be. And these other ones just have different little textures. So we're going to be making these. So like I said, you need glue, scissors, and some like cereal boxes, Kleenex boxes, soap boxes, stuff like that. Or if you have the bad habit of drinking sodas, these are pretty good because you can get nice big pieces out of that you can add your glue to. This poor box is, was on the clearance shelf and it's pretty beat up, but you know, it can still work. I can still get a couple pieces off. So I'm going to show you how to make some and then what to do once they're dry. If you don't have any kind of liquid glue, whether it's the white glue or the clear glue, really guys, this is the age of making slime. 
I'm sure every household with elementary kids in it has some sort of glue in the house. That's how they made the slime. That's when they started selling gallon sized bottles of glue. Kids made this slime stuff they play with all the time. I think it's, that's an incredible texture. It's got a squishiness about it. All right, enough talk. Let's get going. It's real simple. You just need to think in your mind what kind of lines or patterns you want to use on your texture plates. And sometimes, you don't even have to think at all. You just kind of like let it happen. And you'll get a really cool pattern that you can use again and again and again. All right. I don't want that. I don't want these. And I think I'll just cut it in half because I just find like this size is a decent size to work with kids. It doesn't take their whole paper up. It doesn't take a whole bottle of glue. It does have the little fold in there. You know, yes, no, maybe. It'll show up on the rubbings. Yes, no, maybe. You know. Or, let's see, you kind of cut these off. I square it up. Just want to clean it up a little bit. Let me clear off my desk here. And we're ready for glue. Now a lot of kids, believe it or not, using a glue bottle is kind of new to them. They're always given glue sticks. And glue sticks are, are they're good for what they're good for. They're good for little kids. Um, and I mean like pre-K and kindergarten where yes, using a glue bottle is a bit of a mess. But, there are times where you really need the liquid glue because those glue sticks, they just, they're, they uh, spread out very flat, can't get much texture on it, and they're not very strong. In fact, a lot of you may have had artworks that, you know, just kind of fell apart because you used the glue stick. Alright, so, you have this little white tip. You're going to twist it till the white tip goes completely inside the bottle and it won't twist open anymore. Alright, so it kind of opened up and the white tip went away. It is now inside that bottle. Now, if you didn't clean the top of it, you might have to sit there and pick off the stuff. Then when you give it a little squeeze, you should be able to hear it breathe. Alright, that means it's ready to go. Some kids sit there and it's just like, yeah, but there's no glue. Patience. Patience is a virtue. If it's breathing, you're good to go. If it's not, close it and pick the white top. Then open it again and it should be breathing at that point. Okay. No, you don't hold it way up above your surface. Yes, you want it basically touching. I love having mine like touch. Or be almost touching and no you don't get to squeeze the bottle as hard as you can you let gravity bring out as much of it as it will and you barely squeeze it just to get a nice little bead so I don't think I've done a big spiral yet so in this case I'm just barely kind of squeezing it I'm making sure it doesn't touch the other glue and I'm trying to keep it about the same distance away and I'm going to do what looks like a little snail shell and you can do it however it works best for you in this case I need to move this a little bit closer to me I'm concentrating because I did not draw it in advance and I don't really need to because if it is not perfect that's alright it's still going to make a really cool texture rubbing I think I'll just stop it there and again this is going to take about a day to dry before you can use it so we'll do this the day before or the night before All right. and you just come up with your different 
designs. Here I just did a bunch of polka dots. You can still kind of see that before it dries up. This one, uh, you can kind of see the triangles. I did a bunch of different little triangles on that. This one's a bunch of uh, wiggly lines. You can kind of see that. Looks like this one is close, not quite, close to being done. Okay. And you know, you create your lines however you want. And they're not going to be perfect because as you can see, it's going to blob in areas. But as I tell most of my students, let's start out with the cheap stuff. And if you like it, then buy the expensive stuff. So if you love doing mixed media where you have lots of different layers built upon each other, then you're going to invest in texture plates. You can actually buy stuff with neat patterns on it. And they have dragon scales and, you know, hearts and all kinds of little designs and neat patterns that artists have come up with. I think I'm just going to fill that side. Okay. Okay. And believe it or not, if you just kind of go crazy, it also makes a really cool design. I'll use both sides of my paper on this. Right. And just let the stuff dry. This one's going to take a long time to dry, that one, and that one they're going to take a little bit longer. All right. If you don't have the glue, it's okay. All you really need are crayons and paper. So let me move this stuff out of the way. Don't want it dripping on anything. Move that one there. And I don't want to accidentally bump it in a minute or two. I need to dry, so this one's ready to go. These are ready to go. But let's say you don't have glue. Uh, again, you just need a piece of paper. And you need those crayons without the wrappers on it that you can lay sideways. You don't want to color like normal. Then start looking around the house. So I found all kinds of things with texture. These are those fun little, um, what are they called? Little stained glasses you put in your window. You can put it underneath, lay this down flat, and when you rub it, Look at that fun little design that you get. In fact, it's exactly what you did. Now, a couple things you have to be careful of. You have to hold your paper still. Don't let your paper move. And you can't let this move underneath either. Okay? Otherwise, you start getting this blurry effect. Um, <laughs> I have the strangest things. The tile, I'm not going to get any kind of texture. This is smooth. So it's just going to be as smooth as the paper. Nothing exciting. Turn it over, however, and I have this neat section on the bottom. In which when I rub on it, you start getting that pattern. So isn't that fun? You could also take your shoes off. Put your the bottom of your shoe and I don't have any shoes on right now otherwise I show you turn your shoe upside down it has the best textures on there uh, you can even find like sidewalks the cracks and stuff in the sidewalks that's fun to do neat little things around the house again come up with some of the best little designs and I know I'm separating them so you can kind of see what's going on, but you don't have to. Some of the fabrics out there, uh, this is burlap, you may not get much of a texture rubbing on it, but you never know. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, baby. That's cool. Mm hmm. Cover up a nice little section there. 
your Legos. Sometimes you have those big flat pieces of Lego that you attach things to. Those are great for texture rubbings as well. If you have any of this neat, I, I use this for sewing and stuff like for kids. Of course, I have the strangest stuff around. All right, but you get the idea. Well, what about those things you were talking about, Miss Howard? The texture plates. Remember, I did these the other day. So I can put them underneath. Mm -hmm. And this is what my glue created. Remember those spirals I was just showing you? I added some polka dots in between. So part of these texture plates allows you to create your own little designs and patterns. And they're wonderful. And like I said, cheap. I mean, you just cut up some poster board and boxes and stuff. And you use a liquid glue. There's another one. And I think I just did a bunch of triangles on it. I wanted it to have kind of a fiery effect. Right. This one, I believe, are squares. Again, it's kind of hard to see. But it's part of the surprise and the fun. Where's my orange? Where'd you go, orange? Yep. Yeah. Squares that get smaller and smaller and smaller. Press them nice and hard. And this is a wonderful background to your artwork. You know what? To be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure what all I did on this long skinny piece. Oh, diagonal lines. Isn't this just gorgeous? I wish I had more crayon colors, but I didn't want to break up all of my crayons. And this is that wavy one. Look, it completely dried by now. Hmm. It gives me a little bit of an advantage. Okay. It's nice little wavy lines. I really like how my rectangle one came out. Okay. So finding texture and start creating your neat little background. From there, you can simply paint your piece, and if you use the crayons like I did, and you take your paint, or even your markers, and you go on top, You start getting the crayon coming through, especially as it dries. This paint was a little bit thick. Ooh. Maybe I should not use colors that are so exact. You can still see that. I keep forgetting that on the video, it's very different looking. There we go. Or you can use your markers and crayons to create a nice little picture or a saying or even your name. And feel free to color those in. So have fun, experiment, go around outside, get some fresh air while you're at it, okay. find some textures around, or create some of your own. Ooh, my triangles are almost done. I bet I could do this one little corner here. There you go, there's those triangles. Create your own, and you don't have to do anything complex. I mean, really, triangles, lines, circles, dots. And make yourself a fun background. Finding those textures, which again is 
how something feels or looks like it feels. And these are all found objects in my little texture rubbing plates that we did in the classroom. So much fun. Enjoy finding texture and learning about what it looks like on paper for future artistic reference and resources on, ooh, how can I recreate that? Or what can I build from there? Have fun. Bye.